July and the fact that the Angels have actually been interviewed by the DEA. In fact, a report came out the other day, Matt, Matt Harvey had actually been spoken to with the DEA about what had gone on and maybe somebody on their staff had given him some, you know, a mixture of fentanyl that led to his premature death at the age of 27. But, I mean, I do like the Madden hire. The situation I see with him here is similar to that of when Rick Renneria was fired in Chicago after he had been giving a three-year deal. In fact, if you do remember, Brad Osmus, who was who had only managed the Angels for one year, also got a three-year contract and was fired. And, you know, he's gone on to manage, obviously, now with the White Sox. But I think Madden will be a nice little culture change for the Angels. I think, realistically, though, if he's smart and he works with the front office and Billy Epler over there, they decline the option of Cole Calhoun, their right fielder, because they have a prospect waiting in the wings in Joe Adele, who is a natural center fielder, but Trout obviously locked for 12 and 426 in center field and the best player of this generation. There's no doubt about that. You you know, you let Calhoun walk. His offensive numbers have not been good. He's been a below-league average hitter now for back-to-back seasons. The strikeout rate is not fun. Adele, a guy who doesn't strike out, plays good defense, and hits for power, as well as gets on base, I think is a perfect fit in right field. Whether or not you want to, you know, start him in the minors so you get the extra year service time is one thing. But they're also been linked heavily to Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole, a native of Southern California, actually grew up five miles outside of Angel Stadium. And he grew up going to games there, although he did grow up a Yankees fan, but I don't think he'll go there. You know, we made a mention earlier with Ramsey and the state tax in California. It's the same thing with Machado. Machado's actually signed for 10 for 300 with the Padres. After taxes, he's going to see only about half of that contract just because of all that goes on in California financially. But, you know, um, Xavier, give me your thoughts real quick. Garrett Cole, at this point, other than Jacob deGrom, in my opinion, best pitcher in baseball. Do you think that the Angels are going to make a serious offer for him? And in my opinion, you know, before I let you, I let you speak, you know, he'll be a great addition to that staff. But I think they're at least eight or nine pitchers short of really being a competitive team in the American League West. But what say you about Cole? You think they pursue him or not? I believe they will pursue him. But let me say this first before I go further on that conversation, because you brought up the Joe Madden hiring, you brought up the unfortunate Tyler Skagg situation. Here's what's going to happen the first thing with that organization now with Joe Madden officially being hired as the manager yesterday. They're going to let the legal process play its way out. Everything is going to get cleaned up, and they're going to move on from this. That's the first thing that's going to happen with that organization. They're going to move on from the Tyler Skagg situation. They're going to get this dark cloud away from themselves. Joe Madden is going to see to that. However, the legal process ends up playing its way out, whether that means people have to be released, whether they have to be traded, no matter what happens right there. They're going to get that situation cleaned up first and foremost before they do anything else because it's a dark cloud over the organization right now. And you don't want to come into a new job and a new hire like that and you have that hovering over you going into the next season. They're going to have this cleaned up before free agency, and if not before free agency, definitely before spring training. Now, when it comes down to Gary Cole, yes, I believe they'll make a serious offer for him. But I'm not so sure that that's exactly the way that Joe Madden is going to want this to go. Because Joe Madden now has experience as a manager in Tampa Bay. He has experience in Chicago. And he knows what it's going to take for them to win the World Series and to get back in playoff contention and World Series contention. You can't bet the bank on one guy. I read a Bleach Report article a few days ago, Lewis, that said that Gary Cole could be in line to get Bryce Harper money. He's not going to get that from the Angels organization. Not with Joe Madden there. Listen, I agree with you. Along with Jacob DeGrom, he is the best pitcher in baseball right now. I'd actually take him over DeGrom right now just simply because he's now on a 19-game stretch where it's just been absolutely sensational what he's been out there doing on the mound. And I know that he's going to get a serious offer elsewhere, and this is all going to determine on if he's going to chase the money or if he's going to chase a, a more better situation, similar to what he has in Houston right now, because I do believe he's all but done there. He's going to go get his money. He's going to go get paid. But is he going to get paid to the point that it may break the bank of one of the teams? I'm not so sure about that. Now, I do believe they'll make a run for him, but yes, like you said, they are about eight or nine pitchers short, and they need to focus on filling out that rotation all the way around. And to your point about Cole, Cole Calhoun, he's been gone two years ago as far as I'm concerned. He hasn't really lived up to his potential that the organization had for him. 
And listen, this goes back to something else I said a few nights ago, too. They're ultimately going to have to figure out how to get away from this Albert Pujols contract because that's not the Albert Pujols that you thought you were signing there. So they have to figure out how to work around that situation, too, whether they allow it to play itself out for the remainder of years that are left or whether somehow they come to a pay cut, some type of agreement there. I'm not sure, but they have other moves that need to be made there. But, yes, they need to put a full focus on pitching, and they can't surround it just around one guy in particular. All right, let me add a couple things to this. Number one, there's no question that Joe Madden hiring is a good hiring. Number two, you made an interesting point that Madden has gone from the lowest payroll or one of the lowest payrolls to one of the highest payroll, so you went from uh, one extreme to another, okay? And I think that they find a way to um, meet in between this time around because now he's seen it both ways. That's number one. So I definitely think it's a great hire for the Angels. He was in the organization for 30 mm -hmm. years and understands the familiarity of that situation. Now, with that said, okay, we'll see how it plays out. I'm not going to say what they need versus what they don't need. We don't have that much time to do it anyways, and I'm not going to. I do want to talk about the fact that Ron Washington now has emerged as a leading candidate to go to San Diego. If indeed that uh, is true, I think that's a potentially good hire for the Padres. Uh, Ron Washington had a fine record with the Texas Rangers, and he took them to two World Series champions uh, ships, uh, you know, as a runner-up. But he took Texas to nowhere where they ever went before. That's a potential good hire. More hirings will obviously take place as we continue to talk about these in future shows, okay? So th those are some of the things that are coming up. I'm not going to ask you either of you two to comment on the Washington situation. I'm only bringing it to the forefront so we can talk about it another time. Uh, until a deal is struck, it's only speculation uh, unless they identify their final candidate. But the Angels situation does get straightened out. Art, uh, Artie Marino has enough money to pay 10 old managers if he had to do it. So let's not question the fact that he's going to pay Albert Pujols, okay, uh, to sit in a rocking chair at the very end of that contract. It doesn't matter. This guy has the cash. I've been to their spring training facility out in Tempe. Did a good job fixing that place up. And, anything, uh, and he's done a pretty good job over the road. I want to end the show on this note, okay, and that's on the baseball playoffs. Give us an update right now where we're at. Astros are up 6-1. to one. If the Astros go to the World Series, and for all intents and purposes, you, me, Xavier, I'm sure we'll both be watching tomorrow night. I will make the claim right now that between them and the Nationals, because of the three starting pitchers, Corbin, Scherzer, and Strasburg, respectively, with Corbin being the weakest link of the three, though still very good, and Granke, Verlander, Scherzer, or um, Cole, I'm sorry. This is going to go down as one of the best World Series of all time, and that's without any pitches being thrown. And I'm merely saying this because this, we've, I don't think we've ever seen a World Series full of this degree of starting pitching. You can go back to 2001, and that's the only one I'll mention where you had Clemens and Schilling, co-MVPs of that series, going off against Roger Clemens, who should be in the Hall of Fame. Mike Messina, who is in the Hall of Fame. Andy Pettit, who has a very strong Hall of Fame case. We've never seen a World Series, a potential World Series, with this much ability on the mound. You can make a claim for 2017 when the Dodgers had Kershaw, Ryu, you know, maybe Maeda, and a young Walker Buehler in the bullpen going up against a recently acquired Verlander, Charlie Morton, Lance McCullers, who was spinning 24 consecutive curveballs. But this is going to go down. I think is one of the greatest World Series of all time. Better than I'm not going to say better than 2011 because in my lifetime that's the greatest World Series I ever saw. 2014 is up there too, but again, you know it's this is going to be a remarkable series. And for people who say baseball is boring, wait until you get until October, man. I'm getting goosebumps and hairs on the back of my neck are sticking up right now because there's nothing more exciting than seeing a team who starts. It is a 365 day grind, regardless of what sport you play. To and the ultimate goal is to win a Super Bowl, to win an NBA title, to win a national championship, is to win a World Series. To see a team get that final out, however the hell they do it, and to celebrate on the field, it's all worth it. It's all worth the millions of dollars spent, the, the plane rides, the double headers, the you know, you know, just 
at the the grind for lack of a better word that goes into it it's worth it and you know i'm just gonna i'm gonna leave it at that man like it's gonna be a fascinating world series and again you you will have somebody tell you that baseball is boring xavier and scott show them a world series game show them a game seven of days of yesteryear and they'll be convinced otherwise well i'm i'm not gonna say baseball's boring i know where i stand but you did forget the stanley cup finals by the i way. did forget the stanley so cup finals. again we gotta make this guy well-rounded i'm working on it okay but you want to talk about historical perspective and I know you can go back to World Series matchups all day long, but Mickey Lolich and Bob Gibson was a great finale, too. Mm-hmm. Mickey Lolich winning three uh, games in a series uh, that had a rotation with Denny McLean, the last 30-game winner mm-hmm. as well. But again, you know, it'll be an interesting uh, thing. The only concerns I have with is I hope that if Houston's going to get there, that I hope that they're able to do it in less time because the last thing you want is the Nationals to be flat over a longer layoff while the other one is. We saw what happened with the Tigers and the Cardinals <coughs> just a few years ago. Yeah. Right. And again with the Giants too. So again, there's a lot of interesting dynamics about what it is. But yeah, I I've been to game sevens before uh, whether uh, regardless of what the sport is and they are definitely winner take all situations. They make the hairs on the neck of your on the back of your neck stick up, your heart races, regardless of whether you even like the team or not. Xavier, give me like a little sec, a little quick thing on that and how you feel about, you know, just playoffs in general, maybe baseball players, considering that's what we're talking right, about. We got right a few now. more minutes to go before we wrap the program up. So go ahead, Xavier. Well, I'm going to go ahead and answer Scott's question right now, and it wasn't even a question, it was more of a statement. I'll just go ahead and put an answer to it. The yeah. Astros will more than likely end this series tomorrow with Justin Verlander going on the mound. This was my biggest concern about the New York Yankees going into this postseason. It's been my biggest concern about the New York Yankees throughout most of this decade. They have not done a good job addressing that starting pitching at all. They could have had Gary Cole a few years ago. They whipped on that. They could have had Patrick Corbin in the last offseason. They whipped on that. They could have made some moves at the trade deadline. They whipped on that as well. They paid more attention to bringing in more power hitting and shoring up the bullpen. But you have to have some starting pitching that can give the bullpen something to work with as well. They have not done a good job addressing that. I'm with you on this, Lewis. That's going to be a very intriguing potential World Series with the Nationals and the Astros. I'm very excited for that. I'm excited for what both fan bases are going to bring as well. And you talk about Game 7. I'll bring up another Game 7 that happened before I was even born, five years before I was born, but I've seen it on YouTube. And it made me back of the hairs on my neck stand up as well. Game 7, 1991, Braves twins. Mm-hmm, My right. goodness, how phenomenal that was. Right. And you, Game 7, 2014, Royals Giants, that was phenomenal. How about Game 6, 2011, Cardinals and Rangers, that was a phenomenal series. So, no, you're not going to hear me entertain the thoughts of anybody saying that baseball is boring. Because the, as far as I'm concerned, those people don't understand the game enough to understand why people still view this, in a sense, as America's pastime for them to even say something like that. You have to actually understand baseball to actually understand why it is not boring at all. So, well, yes, I am excited for this to potentially be a great World Series. It's going to be a painful ending for the New York Yankees, but until that front office figures out exactly what it is that they need to do to get that team back to where, to where they need to be, because you brought up those names, Andy Pettit and Roger Clemens and Mike Messina, really good, great starting pitchers that they had in the early 2000s to go along with the rest of that core four. They have lost their way with building starting pitching around their team as well to go around phenomenal offensive players who you have for cheap right now. Aaron Judge and Glaber Torres right now. Those guys are for cheap right now. You need to go ahead and get this situation figured out before they become expensive. Totally agree with you. Okay, uh, we are really running out of time. I'll give you your two final thoughts, and then I'll go ahead and uh, cap off the show. i got a couple things I want to say. We'll start off with you, Lewis. Final thoughts. Larry Rothschild's been there, I believe, since 2008. And you know what? Severino, as much as I love the stuff, the the 100-mile-an-hour fastball and the slider, he's a two-pitch pitcher. If the dude comes into 2019, and I know he'll be healthy, considering he didn't pitch much this year, the guy's going to be relegated to that of a reliever moving forward if he doesn't develop a third pitch. Because as a starting pitcher, that adage has never changed that you really need three pitches to offset a hitter's timing. I think Larry Rothschild could be gone after this series. 
if they don't, you know, if they don't advance, just because of you know the fragi the fragility of that pitching staff. 